to the uh, continuation of our Navigating the Coronavirus Economy series. I am Tom Dufour, CEO of Big Sky Franchise Team, and uh, we are in the midst of our continuing education uh, and awareness of everything that's going on. So today we wanted to focus on talking about a little bit on that whole mindset of what maybe a franchisee is thinking about and going through. And so we thought, why not bring in an expert who is oftentimes dealing with these transactions of actually selling a franchise. So we have the, uh, uh, the, we have, uh, the honor of bringing to you today, Marissa Rauchway uh, with Rauchway Law, who's been a, a franchise attorney now for over 10 years, has offices in New Jersey and New York. And uh, she really specializes specifically in franchise law, does a lot of work with existing, um, uh, with existing franchise transactions. So for franchisees that are coming in and thinking about buying a franchise, she works with them, as well as working with the franchisor. So many of you, uh, who knows, uh, Marissa, maybe you're, someone's tuning in looking for a new franchise attorney. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you could be a great point. Or for maybe one of our uh, franchise brokers who may be tuning in today, maybe looking for a good, an additional franchise attorney to refer your candidates for another uh, third party opinion as they're finalizing their FDD or franchise agreement with the franchisor. So um, as we get started with this, uh, uh, that's a quick intro here. Um, with that being said, Marissa, I'd love to turn things over to you to share your wisdom with, with our uh, listeners here. Um, thank you so much, Tom, and for everybody here uh, listening in. Um, it, it really is a pleasure for me to do this this webinar because, like Tom said, um, I am on the phone um, or Zoom calls like this pretty much every day with potential franchisees. Um, like like Tom said, um, you know, a lot of my practice is working with uh, potential franchisees as well as existing franchisees who maybe want to expand their portfolio, either in the same system they're in or, or, or a new system. Um, so, you know, I do really hear from the, the, the consumer um, or the entity, you know, whoever is, is looking uh, to, to get another franchise or get their first franchise um, on a routine basis. Um, so it, it, it's hopefully helpful for the, the franchisers out there, um, not only the ones who, who are new, um, or maybe you don't have a franchise system yet and you know, you're starting the journey to, to, to franchise your business and you know, you're thinking, well, how, how am I going to you know, sell my first franchise? Um, you know, I know, um, you know, Tom and his team, you know, can, can certainly give you information about this. Um, so hopefully what I've been hearing and the conversations that I've been having um, can help give everybody on the call sort of some insight um, into what, you know, franchises are thinking, you know, with, of course, the caveat that, you know, we can't take too much of a broad brush, you know, everybody has their own, you know, concerns. Um, but at the same time, I have been hearing, um, particularly in the COVID environment, um, a lot of repeated concerns and, and, and things that are on people's minds um, that hopefully I can share with you today and, and is helpful when you go out um, to, to, to sell franchises. Um, and, so and, we, and Marissa, before sure. you jump in here, one thing I forgot to mention in your intro, we've worked together on several projects over the last several years. So uh, Marissa's fantastic. So not only is <laughs> she an you. expert, she's a great person. She takes care of her clients and really does well. So I forgot to mention that as just a testimony for you. I think you're fantastic. <laughs> you're, you're awesome to work with. And, uh, you know, for me, I can say, uh, and by the way, there's no uh, paid uh, promotion here. This is just uh, a, an honest opinion and feedback. But the, the thing that's always stood out for me is how much I can tell you really care about your clients. And that is something that just, you, you, it's, it, you can't, it's hard to measure, but you can tell when somebody does. And so I really uh, appreciate that. And I know your clients do too. So thank you very much. And I'll turn the mic back over to you. Well, well, thank you, Tom. I mean, we, we should do this every day. I, I so appreciate that. And, and the feeling is likewise, and it's why um, it's, it's an easy thing to recommend your team to, to, to my clients as well. And that's actually a perfect segue um, to one of the first things that, that, that I wanted to, to talk about here. And it, it may seem obvious to some of you, um, but, but, but may, maybe not. 
Um, you know, a lot of what, particularly the first time um, franchisees, um, whether they even consciously know it or not, um, they're looking for that relationship um, and for a sense from the franchisor that the franchisor doesn't just see them as a dollar sign and as sort of a check mark on their business plan, like, oh, I need, you know, four franchises this year in order to keep the pace that I want. Um, you know, it, 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 it certainly is, it can't be emphasized enough that they want to feel that if they're going to sign up sign, to be a franchise in your system, um, and it's a 10 year term, five year, 15, whatever it is, um, that you actually are looking out for their best interest. Now, of course, um, and as a franchise attorney, I can, I can help sort of um, give them a little bit of, um, I'll call it the reality that at the end of the day, um, you know, of, of course you want to make money, you want to make sure your, your ROI is, but to the extent in your conversations with a franchisee, um, you know, you can give them, you know, I, I won't even say the impression, but the reality that you, you know, you care about not only what if they're going to succeed or not, but how pleasant this experience is and that um, if you can give them examples of, you know, how much communication that they can expect from you. I'm, and I, and I, you know, I'll get a little bit into the, the franchise agreement in a second, um, but I'm talking outside the franchise agreement, outside of what you're required to do. Um, you know, it, it really goes a long way, um, particularly in the, the, the process before somebody uh, eventually signs a franchise agreement or if they're deciding whether they want to sign a franchise agreement, if, if you can really show them um, that this is a relationship that is not going to be a frustrating one, you know, that you may give them exactly what you're supposed to give them in, in the franchise documents, but it may be painful and, and nobody wants that. And I hear that sometimes a year down the road um, from franchisees who, you know, they're, they're, they know they're getting technically everything they're supposed to under the franchise agreement, but they're not happy because of the way um, their franchisor is treating them and, and how much communication they're having. Communication is the first thing that, that comes to mind because that comes up often um, when somebody feels like, hey, I'm paying a royalty monthly. Why am I paying this royalty? I never hear from my franchisor. Um, so, you know, when Tom mentioned, you know, um, very thankfully that, you know, he gets the sense that I, I care about my clients, which of course I do, um, that 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 relationship I see is equally as important. And to the extent you can show them at the outset when someone is deciding whether they want to be a, a franchisee, um, you know, that that really goes a long way. It's it, it's sort of one of those um, not soft skills, but excuse me, um, things outside the agreement that can really go a long way when you're talking to to, to a prospective franchisee. Um, you know, another thing, again, it, it's a little bit stating the obvious, um, but but it's important. Um, obviously, all prospective franchisees are, are not alike. You know, there are, you know, some general categories. You have the, the complete newbies um, to who have never done franchising before, um, who may require a little bit more handholding. They may have an attorney, they may not have an attorney. Um, you know, even if they do have an attorney, I mean, I can talk until I'm blue in the face explaining how franchising works. Um, and again, as a, as a side note, when you see a franchisee attorney, I know sometimes franchisers, um, you know, don't don't have a great view towards franchisee attorneys because they feel like they're getting in the way. Um, that's not how I see my relationship at all. Um, I'm here to hopefully help um, be a be a conduit between the potential franchisee and you guys. Um, and and a lot of what what I do and other franchisee attorneys do is is really explain to a potential franchisee things like hey, this franchisor isn't awful because the franchise agreement looks so one-sided. Um, you know, this is how franchising works and there are good reasons for that, um, you, know, you know, et cetera. So as a franchise attorney, I, I can do a lot of basically your, you know, some of your legwork to sort of um, put the potential franchisee in the mindset of how franchising works and why it works that way. But putting that aside, it's, even when I do that, I see how important it is for that um, information to come from the franchisor also. Um, it, it, it's really important, particularly with these new franchisees, 
um, to really explain to them, you know, why your agreement is structured the way it is. And you don't have to get into the, the, the legal, you know, terms, but just, you know, for example, look, it's in your best interest if we don't make 200 changes to the franchise agreement, because you don't want us doing that to with another potential franchisee. You want us to, you want us to be protecting, you know, our brand as, as, as much as possible. Um, so again, with, with, you know, not all franchisees are alike. With the ones who don't have any franchise experience, my suggestion is, excuse me, to, to do a lot of handholding. And I would say uh, the more information is usually the, the better, um, you know, whether they're represented or not. Now, look, if you're dealing with a potential franchisee who is just trying to add to their portfolio, um, they have 40, you know, units and, so, and, and other brands, you know, not competitive with you guys, um, and you know they they've done this before. You know maybe less hand holding um, is is necessary. But with the with the new ones, you know it, it really does go go a long way um, to to really explain. And, and Marissa, Marissa yeah, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt. Just really quick. That's a great point you bring up about franchise, especially for the new franchise people who are the, those first time franchisees that are they've never bought it. This is their first go, and maybe their only go. At, mm -hmm. at doing this. Uh, I, I can, at, without a doubt, I mean, we always encourage franchise candidates as they're coming through the process to engage with a lawyer to review the, the FDD and the franchise contract and, or and franchise agreement. That should always, you should always be encouraging them to do that. And part of that encouragement should be encouraging them just for our listeners to work with a franchise attorney because I, I've been doing this long enough that when they work with someone that is not a franchise attorney, they bring up issues that are tend to be relatively normal commonplace in the franchise world. And it, it really overcomplicates the process that's pretty straightforward. And it's only because that attorney they hired, and very often it's, oh, well, you know, my my sister is an attorney or my best friend is and he owes me a favor, you know, pick a reason of why they just hire a regular, you know, just an unrelated specialist. And so uh, working with Marissa and other attorneys in a similar situation where they're working with it, it they do a lot in addition to just uh, understanding franchising and how it works, but also un helping them through the process. So uh, just reiterating what you're already saying, but I've, I've lived through both versions many multiple times, and it's much better working with the franchise attorney, not, not only for the franchisor, but as well for the franchisee also, because now they're getting a specialist. No, I appreciate you saying that, uh, Tom. Um, as you can imagine, it's 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 hard for franchisee attorneys um, to you know really impress upon people that because we certainly don't want it to look like you know we just have a vested interest in you guys hiring franchise attorneys. But again, you know from being on both sides, um, again because because I also represent um, franchisors and and setting up their systems. Um, you know, and it's nothing against, you know, other corporate attorneys. It just is a niche area. Um, and again, you know, and I'm speaking with, not just me, speaking with other franchisee attorneys, you know, part of our job um, is really to explain to a potential franchisee what franchising is all about and why certain things are in the agreement and why, you know, for example, sending over 200 changes to a franchisor um, is, is likely not going to, going to go anywhere. So hopefully we make your lives easier while also, you know, representing the, the, the best interests of, of our clients. Um, so just, just turning to, you know, what I'm specifically hearing now in this, you know, COVID time, um, that, that may hopefully be helpful for those listening, you know, trying to sell, sell franchises. Um, now again, I'm going to pref, I'm going to caveat all this, um, with, you know, the different, industries in franchising, you know, you know, of course are, are, are different, you know, depending on, you know, if you're a fast casual restaurant and, and COVID is affecting you differently than, you know, if you're a franchise system that, you know, is a essential service or, or hasn't, it hasn't been affected as much, um, you know, the potential franchisees concerns may, may be different, but I'll just, you know, with that caveat, I'll give a broad brush that throughout um, the, the the spectrum of, of industries, you know, here are the things that I'm hearing most 
and it's probably not going to be surprising to anybody. Um, so, of course, the one of the big issues um, that I hear is, you know, hey, I'm I'm all I'm I'm excited about this potential franchise, but you know, with COVID, we have no idea what kind of restrictions might come up in the fall or the winter or if this comes back. You know, what what's in this franchise agreement? Because um, a lot of times, um, you know, they haven't read it, or you know, they're just they're they're overwhelmed by the 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 sheer size of the FDD, so they're they're coming to a franchise attorney to explain to them, which which I understand. Um, but they want to know, like, is there anything in here that protects me if I just can't um, fulfill one of my obligations in here because of COVID? You know, I'm really nervous about signing something. Um, excuse me, and you know, having COVID make it so you know either I can't make any money or um, there's just a, an obligation, like for opening by a certain time, depending on your your business, if you have a brick and mortar um, requirement, um, you know what, what what can I do? And you know, of course, you know every every franchise agreement is is different. There isn't a broad brush response. But what I will what I will say is, you know, even if you know you're not in a position, you know, to make any changes to your franchise agreement to to make it so. Um, you know, they're, they they don't have to, you know, have those concerns. What I have seen as being, you know, very helpful um, from franchisers um, responding to that is, you know, not necessarily making changes to, to the language in their agreement. Again, depending on what's in there, they may already have force majeure clauses, you know, et cetera, that, that would address that um, depending on, you know, the language in them. Um, but to really be honest and straightforward with these potential franchisees on what they have done um, for their franchise system and how they have addressed, um, you know, what has happened up until now um, with, you know, concrete examples um, and encouraging them to talk to other, you know, franchisees in the system. Now, of course, this this only quote unquote works if, if you know, there has been, you, you know, you have something to say um, about this and, and hopefully you do. Um, but, you know, that that I've definitely seen, um, you know, give some comfort to, to franchisees, you know, when they when you have concrete things to point to. Um, if you don't, I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. If you couldn't, et cetera, um, having sort of a game plan now of what you can tell them of what you 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 plan on doing in the future, concrete steps that you're taking. I mean, look, at the end of the day. Um, you know, it, 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 it still may not, you know, get a potential franchisee to, to sign your franchise agreement because if the language in the agreement is just not comforting for them, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You certainly, you certainly never want to pressure a franchisee to, to sign an agreement they're not comfortable with. Um, but, it, it, but, but this is the, the type of conversations I've seen go on um that have have at the very least and this goes back to the first point i made shows the potential franchisee that you care about their concerns and um because what i have also seen um on the flip side is i have seen not just with this particular issue but with any issue that a potential franchisee brings up i've seen franchisers say things like well, that's an unreasonable request, you know, not just that we won't do it, but, um, you know, th that's just not how this works, etc. Um, and that has been a very, as you can probably imagine, a souring um, that puts off a lot of franchisees. Um, and, you know, that goes to sort of another point that I wanted to make on this call um, is that it, it, you know, even if you you don't want to or you can't make you know any changes to your franchise agreement, um, it's never a good idea to call a franchisee's request unreasonable. In my ten years, that you know, even if it's something coming from an attorney or et cetera, um, it you know there there are ways of saying no in a way that shows a potential franchisee you at least respect the concern. Um, so saying no, because it's, it's, it's what you have to do for your system, which is understandable. Um, and again, I tell potential franchisees that just because a franchisee says no to something doesn't mean they're a terrible franchise, you know, franchisor, there's, there's a business reason for it. Um, but you can do it in such a way that doesn't sour a franchisee's feeling. And on that note, um, you know, a little bit of a, a, a nuance to that, which I have seen multiple times is, 
you have to be really careful with who you have, um, and not just an attorney, but who you have at the company representing you when you're speaking with potential franchisees. Um, and I'm going to give a, an anecdote that I've, that I've given before, um, where I had a, a client of mine um, speaking with uh, the, the owner of a, of a franchise system um, uh, before she even um, retained me, super excited about the concept. They had talked about some of her concerns. Um, and the, the, the owner had, had, had said, yes, you know, we can make a couple of changes um, to, to, to the agreement, like minor changes that will address, you know, your concerns. Um, and, and they were all on the same page. And, and of course, as, as a caveat, you know, sometimes that happens, and then you go back and talk to your attorney and your attorney is like, actually, maybe you don't want to do that. that that's fine. Um, and that happens all the time. Um, but, you know, once we, you know, try to, 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 to paper that, um, you know, not only did I, did, did we get a response of, of no, um, but again, it was the, you know, these are unreasonable, we would never do this, et cetera. And, and it really, really soured my clients, um, you know, feeling towards the, 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 the franchise. And, you know, it, it was, it ended up being able to, to, to be worked out. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I could tell that the, the, the owner did not want that to be the representation to the, the potential franchisee. Um, so not, not just being on the same page on what, you know, you will and, and will not do if you're going to make any sort of accommodations, but being on the same page with how you respond and the tone you want to respond with and, um, you know, is, is, is really important because it can, um, it took a while to, to fix that relationship. Um, and, and, and luckily it, it did and, and it was fine. Um, but you just have to be really careful with, you know, speaking with whoever is representing you. And again, not just an attorney, but um, if, you, if, if you have a member of, um, you know, your franchise system, you know, talking to, to, to franchisees, you know, putting aside compliance issues, um, you want to make sure the, the values of the company and the tone you want to set with the prospective franchisees is relayed to that person who is, is, the, is, is on the front line talking to your prospective franchisees. Mar Marissa, to that point, just a really quick I interruption here. So sure. uh, I, I fully agree with you. And that's something that a lot of, I've seen a lot of emerging brand franchisors, certainly mature brands do it as well. Mature franchise brands, I think, get, get away with it a little bit more because they've got a, in many cases, they have a national brand. There, there are a lot of things that they're able to, uh, I'm not saying they should still do it, but they can ki kind of get past that a little bit easier in those situations. But for an emerging brand or a growing franchise brand, uh, I think you're spot on. I've seen more, especially emerging franchisors that say, well, this is my system and uh, it, you have to remember that, it, it, especially when the original founder is still involved, that the franchisee is not insulting you personally. Uh, and a lot of times I think the franchisor or the franchise salesperson is taking it personally. And remember, they don't know what you know. They don't know the experience. They're nervous. They're scared, uh, especially that newbie franchisee, as you describe them. I think that's a great description. You know, just you got to you got to take it one step at a time. And they are bought in and dialed in emotionally. And, and so if there is an emotional turnoff, it, it very well could lead to that turnoff from buying your franchise brand. Um, and, it, you know, especially when there's, you're, you've got a fun brand or an interesting brand, if there's that emotional tie-in and you kind of pop it with a pin a little bit and uh, it really, it, I mean, they will turn on a dime and head another direction unfortunately unfortunately remember there are lots and lots and lots and lots of other franchises out there so when you do have that one that's hired the attorney and going through that process be be mindful that you know it, this is a very precious uh potential partner and view them as a a, a partner because they're looking at you as a partner and even though you're not quote technically partners together uh it's a franchise agreement it's a contractual relationship but they want to feel important to you um and uh one question i had for you marissa as you sure. were talking about uh validation and as the franchisees go through validation 
some of the new brands we've worked with over the years have, when they don't have a franchisee, what if you don't have any franchisees in the system for validation? And uh, some of them have actually had prospective franchisees actually call longtime vendors or suppliers. Uh, so I'm curious to know your thought on that and for a new franchisor that's coming up and, or for a franchisee that's looking to buy, um, uh, looking to buy a, a franchise uh, of a new brand to give them that peace of mind. Could you talk a little bit about that in your experience? Yeah. I mean, candidly, so what, and I, I've had that several times, had clients who are, are, are going to be the first franchisee. Um, I mean, honestly, you know, honesty is the, the, the best policy. I would say, first of all, I would be very candid with them and say, yes, you are the, you know, the first franchisee, you're the flagship, you know, franchisee for this brand um, and really talk about, you know, why, what makes sense for, in your view as to why you're franchising this brand. I mean, I mean, presumably you are franchising the brand because you have a successful concept. I mean, I always, I always tell people, you know, who come to me, who have a great idea and want to franchise it and, and say, you know, candidly, um, you know, I want you to prove the concept out because it's going to be hard to get your first franchisee if you don't have anything to, to point to. So, so look, if you, if you don't have a franchisee, but you have a corporate store um, or a corporate location or a corporate something, um, you know, you first start, you know, pointing to that and say, look, you know, here is the, 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 what I'm modeling off of. Here's the success. And, and I, and I agree with Tom, you know, you can talk to, um, you know, vendors, people who have relationships, you know, with the, you know, flagship um, store um, to, you know, so they, they have some way of validating, obviously not um, another franchisee, but, but, but the concept. Um, but, but at the same time, I mean, it, it just candidly is riskier generally to be the first franchise. Um, and, you know, typically that, uh, what that ends up meaning is that, you know, you're getting in at the ground floor, you're likely going to have a better quote unquote deal than the person, you know, five years from now when there's, when there's 20 units and, and, and there's, there's, uh, you know, presumably less risk involved because the concept has, has been proven. Um, now I wouldn't say to them, like, you know, you're getting a deal. Um, but you know, that's what, that's when it, it makes sense for them to have a franchisee attorney, um, candidly representing them, because that's something that, you know, me as a franchisee attorney, um, I, I can relay to them that, you know, look, if this was a, a veteran, um, one of the gigantic franchise systems, um, you know, your agreement would probably look different at, at, at this point. Um, so, you know, they, sh I'll say should, if they had, if they have representation, know that, you know, if they're the first franchisee, um, they're, sorry, that's my alarm. Um, it, you know, they're, they're buying into something that they, they would probably, you know, either have to spend more money or have different terms if there was a thousand, you know, units in, in the system. Um, so they, if they're represented, they likely know that. Um, but, but again, my, my advice is to be very candid. Point to your, where you have proven the concept um, as to, you know, validation that the concept works. But at the end of the day, it's up to them if they're willing to take that risk, which is why selling your first franchise, you know, is, is a big deal. Great. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I'll let you jump back to your, uh, to your outline here. Yeah. I mean, I was just, cause I know it's already 1230. Um, I just wanted to make one final point and then yeah. I'm happy if there are more questions to, to answer um, to the extent at all possible, please do not pressure uh, your your franchisees to to sign an agreement. That is one of the biggest red flags um, to you know somebody who who comes into my office or calls you know saying you know I like this concept but they say I have to sign in the next two days. I mean obviously not two days because of the the, the requirements, but you know I have to sign by by X date. Um, 
to the extent there is like a legal reason there's there's you know compliance laws in your specific state where if they actually don't sign by a certain date you know they're they're required to get the you know a different document or or, or whatever um whatever it is um be very upfront with them about it because you never want it to look like you know they're just a number you're just trying to hit a sales quota um and and they're not getting the 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 time that they need um you know i mean the laws give them a required period of time um but but they just may need you know more more time and 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 frankly you know you can you can candidly you know you can candidly say um you know this is a you know a hot territory um you know you can't hold the territory etc et if you guys do have a, a reserve territory um but i would be very very honest i would never um because I just see it done and it, and it sours, fr you know, potential franchisees, you know, without any, you know, reasonable explanation, um, you know, give a give a date that they they have to sign by, because um, you don't want them, you you don't want somebody pressured into signing a franchise agreement in your system. It's just it's it's bad for you, um, it's bad for them. It's 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 just not a good idea. Mm -hmm. I, I agree wholeheartedly with you. Um, and, and when you're when you're on the other side, you want to try to put some timelines and try to, you know, help drive to a finish line. Uh, but I've never found that strong arming a franchise sale just doesn't happen. How can you strong arm someone into buying a franchise? Um, uh, and and uh, additionally, I've seen I, I've never seen an arbitrary. Um, uh, kind of deadline where they say, well, if you sign by this time, then we'll give you, we'll do this or we'll do that. We'll give a discount or what, whatever it is, better terms. I don't know if I can't think of one time that that has actually happened. And this is, this is not like uh, someone coming into your, uh, you know, your, your a two for one special that you're running this week only. Yeah. Th that, that might give you a shot in the arm at your, your business locally, but for franchise sales, not so much. I just, I haven't seen it work. Yep. So I'm happy to answer any, any questions if there's uh, anything on anything I said or anything completely that I haven't touched on. Sure. Uh, well, we can open this up. Anyone who's still on, uh, go ahead and mute yourself. Type a question into the chat box. Um, uh, Jim said thanks, uh, or Juana Cupcake said thanks when we were talking about the one here. Uh, ben had asked about, um, uh, let's see, I'm still learning the basics from what I'm hearing. Franchising in general is really hot right now because of the pandemic. Opposite what I would have thought. Is that what you're seeing? And uh, Ben, I shared last week, I did a whole webinar uh, last Friday on that exact topic. I shared the YouTube link to that if you want to watch it. But Marissa, in your opinion, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, it totally depends on the industry, um, the the person, the the um, uh, like the internal makeup of the, the person who's on the phone. Um, some people think that they can get quote unquote great deals now because it's hard to sell franchises. Um, you know, it, it, it completely depends on like, like, it, like I said before, um, you know, COVID has hit different industries different. You can't paint franchising also with a bad brush, with a broad brush. Um, but I'm, I'm just speaking anecdotally, like I'm still getting the same, same calls. I'm sure Tom and his team has, you know, data, you know, so I, I don't have any data to, this is just anecdotally, you know, I'm, I'm still getting, you know, phone calls for people getting FDDs, you know, across the board. Yeah, well, and I appreciate that. And Ben, I, I would say if, if you do happen to tune into that webinar last week, there are a lot of data points uh, that we went through that kind of show you some of the trends and things that are happening right now that uh, it, it is kind of what you're, what you've been told, to, you know, it, it is a, Franchise sales are growing right now. We're seeing a trend in that direction. We're seeing interest spiking. We're seeing a lot of very favorable things happen right now. So um, as a whole. So anyway, just to give you a quick summary on that. Awesome. Um, other questions that uh, folks might have here as, uh, oh, uh, Marissa, if you wouldn't mind just, uh, and, and I could type this in, but just put your contact information in if these folks want to reach out to you. If anybody on wants to follow up, make sure we get your contact information. And um, if you want to just give your website or best way to get a hold of you as well. 
I am typing that in right now. I apologize, guys. I actually had the chat window closed during this, so I'm just seeing the, the questions. Um, I'm giving you my email and I'll give you my website. And absolutely, I'm, I'm always, I mean, as, as nerdy as this sounds, you know, talking franchising is one of my favorite things. So if anyone has questions, you know, I'm happy to have a phone call, um, shoot me an email, anytime. Great. Well, thank you, Marissa. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you all for tuning in today. And a quick plug for Big Sky before we go. Uh, just a quick uh, announcement. We're going to get some publicity out on this next week, but we are pleased to announce that uh, we were just recognized by Entrepreneur Magazine as the number three uh, franchise consultant and development company in the country by Entrepreneur. So we were very pleased about that. So um, just wanted to share that news. Uh, so we'll get some press out about that next week. So um, Marissa, Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I know the team does too. We'll get this out on a rebroadcast. So if anyone would like to see this again and uh, have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. Thanks so much, Tom. And congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. Take, take care. Thanks, everyone.